Hi guys, my name is Julia and welcome to my channel where I talk about how to improve your listening, speaking, writing and reading skills, how to become more effective users of English. Let's get started. Today we are going to talk about listening subskills and how to become more effective listeners. This is the subject that is definitely one of the most important topics that I discover and uh, that I'm currently working on. It should not be difficult to realize the importance of listening because, in fact, if we self-reflect, during the day we listen to someone for 45% of all our time. Can you imagine? Even speaking takes only 30% of our everyday time. So why listening is important? Listening is really important because this is the skill that helps you become a more effective speaker and you can see about it in one of my recent videos I'm telling there about how to become a more effective speaker. In other words, listening helps us become more effective speakers, listening shows that we respect the person and listening helps us understand how to build up our further communication with the person. That's why it's really important and paramount to understand what another person is saying and sometimes it's frustrating when you don't really understand what another person is telling you. I understand I was there and I've been in these shoes before. I know how challenging it is to not understand someone who is speaking to you and you need to respond to him or her but you don't know how because you didn't understand the question. Anyway, so today we are going to talk about different subskills, listening subskills that you can master and train. Trust me, that's something what you can do. And those who are currently preparing for IELTS or any other exam where you need to demonstrate your listening skills, this video will be definitely helpful. So let's continue our journey. First things first, we need to understand what are the typical problems while listening. Maybe you will recognize yourself in something what I will tell you right now. So the first thing what I hear from my students is they don't understand the accent. The accents are different in different countries and we are not talking only about British or American. That's not the case. We have different accents. French English, Spanish English. We have so many varieties how Asian people speak and you can see that you need to know how to understand all of them and this is something what you can master today I'm gonna share with you five strategies that will help you become better listeners another thing it may happen that you understand the person quite well but he speaks so quickly that you can't grasp everything and it's difficult for you to put everything together in this case I would say that there are other strategies that might help you understand this fast speed and you will see that this is manageable, it's not so stressful, it's all about us perceiving the information and uh, it's all about the way we perceive fast speakers. Uh, we, we think that when the person speaks fast, it's kind of a signal that we might not understand him or her, but that's not so and today we're going to talk about how to avoid it and how to fix it. One one more challenge that my students shared with me they face when they speak with different people. They don't understand some particular words, especially when they speak with native speakers who use some particular jargon or some particular collocations that are common in their place where they are from. I would say that this is something what perplexes all the students and yeah, I understand you completely and totally. These are the words that probably you might not hear in your English lessons and uh, you might not even encounter while watching Netflix. Yeah, that may happen. But it doesn't really mean that you need to feel yourself sad. No way. Don't worry about that. That's not the case because you can deduce information from the context and probably one or two words that you didn't understand. Don't affect dramatically and you can understand the overall meaning of what the person wants to share with you. All right, and now I think it's the time for subskills. The first subskill that I would like to share with you today is predicting. When you predict what you will listen to and what you might hear another person will tell you, it will definitely simplify your understanding. You will see that you will understand the information better and easier and the stress level will definitely drop. How to master this skill? 
Well, first of all, imagine that you turn on the TV and there you can see a handsome man standing in front of the map. He is wearing a beautiful suit and behind him there are some signs of the sun, the cloud, the rain. What you can anticipate? Exactly, you can predict that the information that he is going to share with you will relate to the weather and most likely he will talk about the weather forecast. That's how prediction works. And in fact, you can use the same approach when you, let's say, have a meeting with your colleague or when you need to talk to someone. Because you, first of all, will probably know what the topic of the conversation will be. Second of all, you probably know the person who you will talk with. Even if you don't know the person who you will talk with, let's say it's a job interview, then you can anticipate the questions that the person will ask you. And this is something what I also talk about in my videos that you can see either here or here, how to prepare for a job interview. So the most important thing is to understand the question. Mainly the questions are more or less the same or they relate to the same thing. If you understand what you might be asked, you can predict the questions. It can even help you prepare the answers in advance. I didn't tell you that. Depending on the event, let's say you go to the supermarket or to the lecture or to work, you can anticipate what people will talk about with you. And you will see that uh, depending on this or that situation, you will pick these or that repertoire of your words and the vocabulary will be pre-selected. When you predict what another person might ask you, it will be easier for you to respond. To this person. How you can master this sub skill? All right, now this is the most interesting thing. First, you need to choose some YouTube video, watch some part of the video, and then stop. Try to predict what the person will say next, and then double check whether you are in the right way or probably your predictions were wrong. After some time of practicing this task, you will see that your prediction will become easier and more accurate. Share in the comments down below how your experience with this activity will be. And the tip for those who are doing an exam. First, scheme the questions so that you understand why and what you need to listen out for. Then you can predict what the speaker will talk about and it will be easier for you to focus on those things that you need to listen to. This activity will definitely ease your understanding and comprehension. All right, the second sub skill that I'm sure you have heard of before is listening for a gist. In other words, understanding the whole picture. I want you to imagine the situation that you are a superhero and you are flying and observing the city. You can't see everything what is happening in every single household but you can see the overall picture what's happening in the city. This is something about gist. You need to understand what's happening in general, what is the main idea and what is the general idea. In order to master this skill, I will share with you one activity that you can do and that will bring you further to your final goal of effective listener. What can help you master this skill? Definitely paying attention to the content words. For example, such words like jam, banana, cooker, will definitely help you understand that the subject will be about food and you will listen to some program how to cook some particular dish or something like that. So in other words, you can anticipate what will happen in the listening activity. How to master this skill? Well, first of all, we need to take a YouTube video, start watching this video and pay attention to content words. Those that relate to one group help you understand what it is about. Then listen to the same extract this for the second time with the subtitles and try to check whether you were on the right track with your assumptions. Try to compare how much you understood after the first time of watching and then you will see where the gap is. Return to the video one week later and do it again. Noticing the content words 
definitely help you become better listeners. And tip from me that will help you learn the words. When you learn the words, it's better to group them according to some particular subject. So let's say you have a mind map of food or a mind map with the words related to work. You know that you can classify them. It will be easier for you to refer to them further and Take them from your head and use them in the right place. These are the words that will definitely help you and structureize your thoughts and ideas when you listen to something. The third sub-skill that I would like to share with you guys would be detecting signposts. And just like with driving, when you see the signposts, which tell you what to do next and which action to take. Signposts in the language is the signal for you about what the person intends to share next. For example, when you come to the presentation, you expect uh, some particular signposting to hear, such as, hello everyone, I'm so glad to see you here. Today, I would like to tell you about this and that. And then you see that the speaker divides his speech into some parts using first, second, and finally. And now let's recap. This is also one of the signposts that identifies what the speaker wants to show. And let's say even if you skipped something at the beginning, you didn't hear something during the presentation. This is the sign for you to listen carefully. And even if you missed something, this is the right time to switch on your full attention and to listen carefully. Signposts in language can be used both in spoken and written language. And you need to understand how to use it effectively. But here we talk about listening skills. So in your case, you need to identify them and notice them while listening. Signposting helps you understand what the speaker wants to say and you understand and can even predict what will happen next. If I say, for example, you understand that the upcoming information will be definitely some short story or a short example that will convey the meaning of the previous message. How to master signposting? First of all, you need to notice signposting and in order to notice it, I recommend watching TED Talks. Pick one short TED Talk where the presenter will definitely use these phrases. Try to listen to the presenter without the subtitles for the first time and try to notice as many signpost phrases as you can. Then listen to the same speaker for the second time with the subtitles or with a tape script and try to see how many signposts you have noticed the first time. You will see that the more you do this activity, the more you will notice and the better your experience with listening will be. And one tip from me would be the following. While listening and practicing this activity, I would definitely suggest grouping the signposting according to the function. For example, if you listen to some signpost phrase related to giving examples, you would rather put it into one group and there you will know that all these phrases relate to one thing, providing an example, for instance, for example, and the rest of the phrases will be there. Another group would be for sequencing. Firstly, secondly, thirdly, finally, these are the phrases that will be in another functional group. It will help you learn them and in the future use them in your speech. And now another subskill, listening for detail. When you listen for the detail, you are interested in particular kind of information. It can be the name, the number, the name of the street. This is something what will definitely help you focus on one particular thing and when you understand why you listen to some particular text, when you understand the purpose, let's say you need to listen in order to grasp some date or the phone number, then you understand that you need to focus and you need to train this particular thing. How to become a better listener and how to notice these details? Well, this is a very good question. There is an activity that will help you. If you want to practice 
listening for details, I would definitely suggest picking some text for listening without subtitles. Choose some particular part that you would like to listen for. So let's say you would like to listen for the numbers. If you ask me, I would definitely suggest listening to the weather forecast and try to notice some data. Let's say you need to focus on some particular words. So what you need to listen for, you need to listen for some particular details such as the cities and the temperature in this particular city. These are the things that you need to listen to carefully. If you do this activity every day within one month, you will see that you will listen to the information more attentively and you will start noticing the details easier. If you prepare for any exam, you need to skim the questions quickly and highlight the keywords that you might need to listen to during your activity. It will help you focus on the most important things and you will see that this listening will be a way better experience for you. And the last sub skill that I would like to talk about with you today is inferring the meaning. Inferring the meaning stands for understanding what is behind the idea, what the person tells you. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you travel all over the world and in different countries people can't speak English. You want to pay for the dinner and you ask for a bill and you would like to pay with your card. The waiter comes to you and tries to explain something apologetically, but you don't understand anything. Probably you can deduce, you can infer from his gestures and from his facial expression that he apologizes for some inconveniences. And in this case, you use some background knowledge and you can understand that uh, something is not possible. In this case, it is not possible to pay by card. Similarly, we can infer the relationship between two people based on what we hear and how they speak. For example, did you do your homework? No, sir, I'm so sorry. Can I submit it a little bit later? Even if you can't see people speaking, you can understand that in this dialect, one person is probably the teacher and another person is probably the student. And you can understand it based on what they say. So there is some information that helps you understand what the topic is about. And you can use different clues in order to infer the meaning. You can use the background knowledge, you can use the world knowledge that helps you understand what the speaker is talking about. Even you cannot understand some words. By using contextual clues and our knowledge, we can see that inferring information becomes a more pleasant experience. The most important thing here is to practice it. And now I will tell you what you can do in order to practice inference in your everyday life. In order to practice it, pick some episode of your favorite series, start listening to it, but don't watch it. Try to think about the relationship between the speakers and the dialects, what they are doing at that particular moment, and try to infer this information and put it on the paper. Then, then, watch it again, but this time you can watch it and listen to it at the same time and compare what you inferred with what takes place in this episode. This is how you can practice inference and this is one of the skills that you need to master in order to prepare yourself for different exams. And tip from me, next time when you listen to someone and you don't understand the word, try to deduce the meaning and then look it up in a dictionary and compare whether your deduction was right or wrong. So let's recap. As we can see, prediction is the only one listening activity that you can anticipate and that you can do before listening. The rest, I'm afraid you need to master simultaneously. In this case, you need to dedicate some time to these activities in order to master these skills. Listening is a very interesting skill and the sub skills that we were discussing today are definitely the ones that you need to consider practicing if you want to become an effective listener. 
I hope that you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, I would be really glad to answer them in the comments down below. If you like this video, thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and see you in my new video. Bye!